Rub up your engines! Well, will the coronavirus knock the heck out of U.S. car sales? Going by what happened in China in February, the Chinese new car sales were down as much as 92%. Yes, we'll see what's going to happen in the United States here. Now, if things start to go that bad, there's always a positive thing to look at. They're going to have to have sales, and they're going to have to lower the prices to entice people in. You never know. We'll find out. One, people were supposed to stay sheltered in place, so if you can't go out to buy cars, that's going to shut it down. And the other one was, even if they had customers, a lot of their factories were shut down, so nobody was building the cars. Double-edged sword there. Now, as of yet, no domestic auto factories have shut down in the United States, but I mean, all those people working in closed conjunction and a closed environment, yeah, we'll see what happens as time goes on here, but uh, it certainly did a big deal to the auto business in China, and I can't see why it wouldn't be any different to some extent here. A lot of car parts today come from China, even the ones that they're building over here, so if the Chinese aren't building the parts, they're not going to be able to finalize the cars here either. Last month, uh, there were Chinese guys that were boarding planes with suitcases full of Jaguar parts, because, you know, Jaguar is owned by China now, and shipping them to England where they still build something so they could finalize the building of the Jaguars in there. Who knows what craziness will come out of this? Well, here we go. Hyundai and Genesis, you know, same company. They just uh, kind of like Toyota and Lexus. They said that they will cover six months of your car payments if you lose your job to coronavirus. They're saying that if you're buying a new one, obviously their sales are down. All the sales are down now. They will cover the payments for up to six months if if you can prove that you lost your job due to the coronavirus. You have to realize this only counts from March 14th when they announced it. So if you already have one, it's too late. But if you buy a car March 14th or forwards, then that program works for you. If you're going to retire, that doesn't count. It has to be because of the coronavirus, like they shut down your office, shut down your factory. And I do have to say that Hyundai has been pretty fair to their customers. Uh, at the 2008 financial crisis, Hyundai allowed customers to return their cars if they lost their jobs and could no longer pay for it. So, hey, this Korean company certainly showing themselves to be a lot more socially responsible than the other car manufacturers who haven't done anything like this. So kudos to Hyundai and Genesis for saying they're going to try to help people out with this. Hey, maybe other people will follow up with them, you know? People, corporations actually helping people out. Sammy Boy 44 says, I got a Honda Accord 2004. It only vibrates when I put it in gear. Doesn't vibrate in park or neutral. Doesn't vibrate when I accelerate. You got a very typical problem. When a vehicle isn't running perfectly, you put it in drive, it vibrates. It can be a vacuum leak. It can be the spark plugs are worn out. It can be the air filters clogged up. You want to check all the simple things first. But if it's not those, then what you want to do is have your fuel injection system pressure cleaned by a mechanic. We charge a hundred something bucks. We got a machine. We hook it up. It runs pure cleaner through the injectors directly by hooking it up to the fuel rail. It's not like pouring something in a gas tank where it's all diluted. This is pure cleaner running it. And then a lot of times they'll run better. But there's also something that can happen to cars. A lot of people live with it. My old uh, Celica, 94 Celica with 240,000 miles has done that ever since I bought it and I don't care. It runs perfectly fine at park or neutral, but when you put it in drive, it shakes some. And what it is, is the torque converter is worn. Automatic transmissions have a torque converter. That bolts onto the flywheel. So as long as the engine's running, that thing's spinning. When it's in neutral, it's not dragging anything because it's a neutral. It's not spinning the transmission. But when you put it in drive, then the torque converter starts lugging down from the pressure of the transmission. And if it's somewhat worn, it will shake somewhat. And, but if you put it in neutral or park, it'll stop shaking. So with my Celica, when I drive it around, eh, if it's shaking a little bit too much, I just pop it neutral when I'm waiting at a stop sign, and it doesn't shake at all. It's done that for seven years. Yeah? So I'm not going to go take the transmission apart, buy an expensive torque converter, and put it on for that stupid little thing. If you find out it's ultimately that, eh, my advice, live with it. Geo92 says, Scotty, two questions. If your all-wheel sy drive system doesn't work, will your car run? and two-wheel driver will not work at all. And two, if a turbo breaks, will the engine still run? Now, it's for the all-wheel drive. If it breaks, it depends on the systems. There are scores of different all-wheel drive systems out there now. But modern vehicles, all-wheel drive, a lot of them are computer run, and it won't run right. Uh, you just have problems. Now, as for the turbochargers, got a turbocharged engine. If the turbo breaks, if it completely breaks, it can run. 
on a lot of cars, it'll be very slow because it's set up for the turbocharger and without it, it's going to run worse than a car that didn't have a turbo on it because that car set up for a turbocharged engine and the computer system all operating assuming the turbo's working and when it doesn't your check engine lights are going to come on all the time warning you that's not working and it can still run but it won't even run as good as a car the same car without a turbo I've had it happen to customers and they drove it they said oh man this thing really is slow it runs like crap you don't want to pay for the turbo that's your only other choice is to drive it the way it is Yazabande says Scotty I just removed my catalytic converter on my 2014 Honda Accord V6. I expect any problems in the long run. If you get caught by the thought police or the EPA, you're breaking the law. You're breaking federal law driving a car that new without a catalytic converter. I realize that. But if you want the technology behind it, the catalytic converter in a car only serves one purpose, and that's to stop unburned hydrocarbons from going into the atmosphere. And if you removed it, the car can still run. Your check engine lights are going to be coming on all over the place because the computer knows you removed it, and uh, you'll get check engine lights for all kinds of things. But it ain't going to hurt the car itself, but you're breaking the law. You know, you got a car that's now polluting, and all the other people aren't. And uh, like I say, in most places, you get your car inspected. If they find out you took the catalytic let a converter off I mean they could report you so I mean it's not a good idea cats don't cost that much money on a Honda Accord you know of course race cars don't have catalytic converters and they're running full blast out and usually they don't even have mufflers on them they run even faster but you know you're not supposed to do that you are breaking federal law in the United States doing it Ninja Slayer says what's the difference between a Subaru boxer engine and a regular engine okay the boxer engine they call them boxers because you think they're like a boxer back back forth they're opposed cylinders like the original boxer engine uh, it was a BMW motorcycle engine that had twin cylinders on the outside, those big lumps sticking out of the side. And then Volkswagen, of course, had the four-cylinder boxer engines that were two on each side. And the Subarus are pretty much copies of the Volkswagen four-cylinder engine. And then they've got a six-cylinder one that's pretty much a copy of the Porsche six-cylinder inline boxer engine. The advantage of them are they're smaller, they can be put lower, they're thinner, and so they put them in small, racy little cars originally as a big advantage. But of course, that was a long time, many, many moons ago. <laughs> The world passed that design by. They keep making them, you know, the cult thing. Some people like them, but, uh, you know, you get a boxer engine, you get a plain old four-cylinder inline engine. Some of those little babies are putting out 365 horsepower now. You can't get that out of the boxer engines. It's an old design, and they have head gasket problems, and uh, they are in love with it at Subaru, and that's all they make. So, you know, uh, they're not going to start revamping everything now. Uh, who knows how much longer they're going to make internal combustion engines, so they're not going to change everything up, but it is an old design. Sims, not. 92 said, Scotty, I bought a 99 Avalon from an old lady with 88,000 miles. I replaced the time belt, water pump, and seal because there was no service record. Was I wrong to do so or was I smart to do so? You were smart to do so if you're planning on keeping a car long term. It's 21 years old. One advantage of that particular engine is it's a non-interference V6 engine. So if the timing belt or water pump broke, the pistons don't hit the valves, doesn't damage the engine, and it doesn't cost any more money to fix it after it breaks than before. So if you were a real cheap, you could gamble. Uh, it's, it's got 88,000 miles. I've seen Avalons with 288,000 miles, original water pump, original timing belt, and they're still running. So, you know, if you were a gambler, you could have done that. But for peace of mind now, you know, all this stuff's new, and the last to 21 years and you get another 21 years out of it you're making out like a gangbusters you know okay brant says scotty my sister lives in oregon and bought a 2004 honda accord she's complaining that gas mileage is bad i suggested fuel filters better needs a tune-up of course do what you suggest first the simple things a gas mileage has a lot to depend on people how they drive and where they drive let's say she's in oregon in the mountainous part you're gonna get crappy gas mileage because you get a little four-cylinder engine that's going up and down the mountains all the time it has to strain a lot and you will get worse gas mileage. A lot of it has to do with where you're driving plus how you drive. Remember when I was a young mechanic, I came in a garage and said, oh, the car's got horrible gas mileage. So my grandfather, who was the chief mechanic, goes for a ride with him. And the guy slams on the brake and then slams on the gas when he goes through the stop and then slams on the brake and goes as fast as he can. My grandfather said, hey, you're lucky you're getting 12 miles a gallon in this car. Nothing wrong with the car whatsoever. So you don't want to do the tune-up and stuff, but she has to realize where she lives and how she drives too. A lot of times it has nothing to do with the vehicle. Generally, if the check engine light is not, if it runs good and the transmission shifts smooth bad gas mileage is usually people are driving too fast or they're driving in hard terrain strains the engine more 
and the gas mileage is going to go down. Plus, in the winter, you're always going to get worse gas mileage because it's cold outside and the machines are less efficient when they're cold. Fred Anderson said, Scotty, Will Smith called the 1986 Ford LTD Crown Vic a uh, Ford POS in his first Men in Black movie. Do you think he was right? Or are they actually decent cars of their time? They were great grandpa cars. Grandma and grandpas, you're riding on the couch. It's like you're driving down the road, sitting on your living room couch. They ride smooth because they got a big wheelbase. And the later ones weren't horrible on gas mileage. I've seen them get 30 something on the highway in town. They're a little gas hoggy, but you know, they're big safe cars too. Now, personally, I wouldn't listen to anything that Will Smith says about automobiles. And let's face it, you know, the, one of the world's worst rappers. <laughs> he should concentrate on making better music than insulting cars. But hey, after all, he probably didn't even write the line. Somebody wrote the line for him. <laughs> but if he wrote that line, I'd say yes, he doesn't know anything about cars at all. <laughs> Alan Valdez says, Scotty, I have a 94 Ford Explorer, 550,000 miles. The radiator went out. Is it worth fixing? Well, just for sentimentality, yeah, why not fix it? How did it go out? If the radiator just leaked and, it, you know, you see it's leaking and you replace it, I'd say go right ahead. You can get aftermarket radiators. These days, cheap enough. The last time I bought one of those cost me like 120 bucks, so it's not that expensive. It's pretty easy to replace, too. You got to think, did you overheat the engine and blow the head gasket? Because if you did, then no, it would not be worth fixing and rebuilding the engine. You want to see, is the head gasket blown? Is there a problem with that? Have that tested first. And then if it checks that it's not blown, eh, go ahead and put a radiator. What the heck? It's got all those miles that served you well. Who knows how long it'll last? Hey, I-08 says, greeting Scotty. I just bought an 04 Solera. Automatic four speed. 74,000 miles. Good condition, but it's two codes that say rear speed sensor not working. How big of an issue is it? Can I live with it? All right. What it is is your speed sensor for the analog brake system isn't working right. Now, if you don't care about ABS brakes, it reverts to non-ABS normal braking, which most of my cars have anyway. Only my wife's Lexus has ABS. All my other ones don't have ABS, and they work perfectly fine. I know how to drive cars. But if you want the ABS system, you take off the tires, and you'll see there's an ABS sensor, and it's a little bitty bolt. I think it's 10 millimeter. You take it off, and then you pop the sensor off, and it unplugs. You plug another one in. So if you want to buy one and put one in, you might as well do it on both sides. It's not that hard to do. You could do it yourself and then drive it around. The light should go off. P32793 says, Scott, I got an 06 Ford Taurus, 125,000 miles. When it starts, I get a horrible smell of raw fuel for 30 seconds to a minute. I have a check engine light on for cylinder number one misfire. All right. What you want to check first is ignition coil on number one. And what you can do is you can take the number one off, say put it on the number three, put the number three coil on the number one, then drive it. If the misfire moves to number three, it's just a bad coil, replace the coil. Easy test, right? Now, it could also be a bad fuel injector. It's a much bigger pain in the rear end to swap the fuel injector from one and three. I mean, if you want to do that, you can. But let's say you move the coils, it's still number one. Then, in that case, I'd say you might as well just buy a new fuel injector for number one and replace that. Because if it's leaking in the beginning and spraying too much gas, you're going to smell gas. But of course, like I said, if the coil's bad and it's not firing right, then you're going to get gas into the cylinder, but it's going to smell out the back because it's not firing because the coil isn't firing. So do those steps and pray it's not something like a bad head gasket or a broken valve on a number one cylinder because that's expensive. Charlene doesn't know, so I got a 2015 Acura ILX. My airbag light is on, and a guy told me it has code 31 slash 10 open in a driver's side airbag inflator. All right, that means you got a problem in your airbag system. Now, they're very complex. It requires a fancy deal out of a scanner, like I got a bunch of them hanging all over the place here. I did one a few months ago. Well, actually, I didn't do it. They brought it, and I told them what was wrong. You need a new airbag module and guess what? The Acura dealer has to replace it free. Write the number down. You might on your phone do a little research and you'll see, ah, there's a warranty. Click a picture of it. So when you go to the dealer, you say, hey, this is the problem. I know you have to fix this for free and they'll fix it for free. They did for my customer. GG93 says, I got a 2017 Chevy Impala. My air conditioning wasn't working right, so a guy added some refrigerant and now the compressor keeps sucking on and off and on and off and I don't get cold there. Help. Now, there's lots of reasons you can have problems with compressors. The thing is, that's a 2017. It's not that old. And even though it's a GM product, they generally aren't that crappy that the thing's broken already two and a half years old. What probably happened, and I see this all the time, they will leak a little refrigerant because they have a very small charge and you leak even a tiny amount, they don't work right. Since you didn't say it cycled on and off, on and off, on and off before, and now it does. I'm thinking that 
The fool that added the refrigerant to your car put too much in. Because what happens on those is, if you put too much refrigerant, there is a high pressure switch. And as soon as it starts building up pressure, if there's too much refrigerant, the pressure gets too high. And the high pressure switch says, shut off the compressor so it doesn't blow anything up. So it shuts it off. And then when the pressure goes down, it turns it back on. But as soon as it builds the pressure up, which isn't that long, it'll say too high, shut it off. So it can go on, off, on, off, on, off, and you won't get cold there. So have a real pro like myself check it. What we do is we have a recycling machine. We take the old refrigerant out and we see how much weight was in it. The last time I did one of those, that thing holds uh, not all that much. The last time I did one, the guy had like two and a half pounds of refrigerant. And when I put the right in, it went back to working normal. Then if you find in three years it doesn't work right again, go to that same guy and say, oh, some of that leaked out. Put just the right amount in. Because you put too much in in a modern one, that's what will happen. On, off, on, off, and it won't get cold. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.